I have not seen one bad review on the product. We don't promote it. We don't do anything with it, but I see reviews all the time. They're always positive. I've got unsolicited emails for the product. I've got people asking me to speak at a seminar as eBay experts. I've been interviewed on the phone. I've had publishing deal offers made to me. You guys want to launch a business. That's why I sent that email out yesterday. It wasn't because I wanted you to buy a $20 book. I didn't even say buy the book, did I? Who's on my list? I just said, look at what he's doing. He just launched himself a multi-million dollar speaking career, I'm willing to bet. How did he do it? That was the important thing that you guys need to know. How did he do it? Did anyone look at it, actually? Tapped into a huge distribution network. Yep. And he was smart. So, write down the best ideas on 3x5 note cards, just like in school. Use on Folio, OneNote, or even a text editor to compile all the information in your spot. I actually have Anthony working on a product for us in the market, and he's just compiling all the information, going through the same exact steps. I taught that guy to do it, and we use it in our own office. This is exactly the kind of stuff that you guys can do, too. Some of the pieces into, of information into an outline refer to the top selling products for content and structure cues. If you don't know how to put it all the pieces together, when you got all your 3x5 cards, so to speak, Look at a good book in the marketplace. Say, how did he structure? Did he start out saying, okay, you're going to sell on eBay, but uh, the first thing that you need to do is go get a merchant account, or did he say the first thing you need to do is you know, put up the eBay store? I don't know, but look at the structure. See what makes sense to you. See if it's a successful book. Use it as clues for how you assemble the product. I know guys that pull out the product and then just rewrite it themselves, and I don't advocate doing that. I think it's silly, but I know marketers that do it, and they literally just take a book and just start writing. That's not what I'm talking about. It's all about plagiarizing it all because we want to make it better. So we're going to come up with our own twist, our own angles, our own stuff. Refer to the top selling products for content and structure cues. Make notes on the weak points in the top sellers and be sure to address them in your product. So the weak points are what you're concerned with because you want to make something better. So keep a separate list of the weaknesses of the products that you've looked at so you can fill those weaknesses with strengths. You can use it to your advantage in your marketing efforts and your product design. Did you guys think you were going to learn SEO today? Sure. There's some products like uh, something that I want to do, and I've identified a couple of clickback products that I like specifically because they have some information in them that I haven't seen anywhere else. And these are liked by you know lawyers or somebody who's been in this field who have some real authority. Um, you know, it'd be really nice to take that and summarize it, but I'm not a lawyer. I don't have the authority. How do you? I mean, well, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, if well, you, if you ask me, I'd tell you I'd give them credit for the idea. Ideas, technically speaking, certain ideas. I'm not a copyright lawyer. I pay one. I would give attribution if you're concerned about it. I would give them credit. I just quote it. When you put together in school, when you're putting together your library research, don't you set up a bibliography and make credits and footnotes and all that stuff? I'm not a lawyer, not making a legal statement, but here's what I understand about the copyright laws. If you're not required to make attribution, if you do not steal the essence of the work itself, if it is not the essence of the work, you are not required, and I'm not a lawyer, you're not required to make attribution, but I always make attribution. I stand up on stage and I give names out all the time, because I'm not going to stand here and tell you I was an original thinker, none of this stuff is original that I do. I just try to figure out how to do it a little bit different or better. So I would give attribution if I were you. Okay, thanks. Okay. How much time do we have, Jeff? Okay. <clears throat> sure. Who was asking? Oh, oh. That wasn't me. That was him. Was it Ted? Uh, no questions? Okay. Any questions? Does Ted? Yeah, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I wasn't foolish enough to be a lawyer. For, assemble the pieces into an info, into an outline, refer to the top selling products, content, and structure. We talked about all that stuff. People like to see specific, concrete examples of your given solutions. So, like the slides I had for Google Trends, I could have just said I'd go to Google Trends, but I gave you guys a specific, concrete example of how I used it. People want that. That helps them learn better. It helps them retain the information better. 
So use specific examples. It's one of the weaknesses I see on these e-books is these people put out these e-books and it's nothing but row after row of text. They don't even do a good job of formatting it. I'm terrible. I don't even know how to use half the stuff I'm supposed to use, but, but at least put some pretty pictures in once in a while for us to learn from. Didn't Evan talk about different modalities of learning? Different modes of learning, the modalities, modalities of learning? Put in pictures. It breaks up the book. People like to see them. It's concrete examples. Make it better. Be more specific. Use lots of examples. Use screenshots. Use real-life examples. Create video tutorials. Camtasia.com. I believe Jeff gave you guys a free copy. You can go to Camtasia.com. Download the free 30-day trial. My partner didn't own Camtasia. I ordered a copy for him, but he needed it before the copy arrived. So I sent him over to Camtasia. He created all the videos that he needed to create for our product in this launch, which wasn't a launch, by the way, because we didn't. It was perfect. But uh, he did it using the free version. It's 100% full version copy, and it's free. My office, for two years, I, I ran an office in Michigan, and across the street was Tech Smith headquarters. Camtasia's world headquarters was across from my office for two years. I looked at it. I said, hmm, I wonder what they do. <laughs> if I would have known then that I'd be an internet marketer, how much I love and depend upon Camtasia, I would have gone and drank some beers at the local British Isle pub down the street with them. So they're great people. In fact, I talked to them. They sent me stuff. If you guys do a seminar, they'll give you stuff to distribute to your people for free, t-shirts, pens, all that stuff. And, you know, it's nice to have because we used it to create a product because he didn't have it in time. So audio recordings, I personally like to use Sony, but uh, we recommend for our products, we recommend people use Audacity. You can find it at audacity.sourceforge.net. It's a free MP3 thing. That's what we use for this product just because that's what we recommend it to our clients too. Video and audio products have a much higher perceived value. Don't, everyone knows this, right? We talked about that yesterday. Evan said you turn in the same product and you turn it into an audio recording, it's worth 100 bucks. We've all known that, right? So add videos, add MP3s, make it a little bit better than the next guy. You don't even have to increase the price if you don't. If the price point is the same and you've got all the extras and you study their systems for conversions, how hard will it be for you to actually beat their conversions? It shouldn't be hard, should it? Study the structure of the sales letter, study the structure of the sales funnel, and make a better product. And do a better job of recruiting affiliates by paying out more money than the next guy pays, by having your personal assistant call them. That's another thing right here, folks. Even my own friends, when I send them a link and say, hey, why don't you mail this for me? They won't mail it. But when I send them a personal email and say, hey, you know, my assistant sent you a link, my affiliate manager sent you a link, I'd appreciate it if you send it out. Nine times out of ten, it'll go out. But if it's just the JV manager that sends it out, chances are it doesn't get acted upon. I'm just as guilty, too. Until they get a hold of me personally, unless I know them, I know that they're busy. If they don't get a hold of me personally and I just get the vast email contact, I got too much stuff to do in the day for what little hours I have. I, I work, I go in at 10 or 11. I have lunch every single day with my family. I come back, work for a couple more hours. I leave at 5 o'clock. I have dinner with my family every night of the week. I have lunch with them four or five days a week. I have coffee with my wife every morning. Take my kids to the school bus every single morning, done it their entire lives. Why? Because that's what I want to do. So if somebody as a JV person comes to me and wants me to, to give them my list, at least give me the courtesy of picking up the phone or shooting me an email, personal email. Because otherwise, I got too much other stuff. I got a list of stuff this tall I can't get to. 